Woodbridge Bulmer from Brisbane. So we're back to microphone number three. Chairman, I have a question from Paul Herman from Brisbane. Good morning, if it's still morning um, to the board and to the shareholders and to uh, the CEO. Um, I also want to bring up uh, the topic of liar loans. My, my name's um, Paul Herman, as said. Uh, I uh, represent people who have had difficulties uh, with uh, ANZ. So I've got a, a support group which is called ANZ Unhappy Customers. And I want to just ask about uh, the fact that um, UBS did a survey where they found that 55% of the uh, loans by ANZ Bank were liar loans. Uh, the industry, actually I'll just show you a chart of that. So this is, um, has the industry um, at 36% uh, and uh, ANZ Bank right out in front. So that's in the last survey in uh, 2021. So last, uh, so, um, also, I want to make the point that since 2015 with the UBS surveys, uh, it, ANZ was 34% in 2015. Now, in 2021, the last survey, the liar loan rate was 55%. So last time I was here was in 2019 and I broached this topic. Um, Mr Elliott uh, blamed brokers and customers. However, as uh, Craig pointed out, UBS found that 81% uh, of ANZ customers with liar loans said that ANZ employees told them to lie. So I'm, I'm just, I think that that's really concerning. Um, in my case, uh, I had my documents fraudulently altered by a, uh, a bank employee and my uh, income was inflated by 625% without my knowledge after I gave over the application forms. Uh, there was a story about this also with Elizabeth Donato, um, who, sorry, Elizabeta, um, who had her income inflated as well. And it's just very distressing and it interrupts the lives of people who have been impacted by fraud or uh, the situation with liar loans. There's a, an, you know, if 55% of the loans are liar loans, I'm really concerned that uh, first homeowners, you know, may be encouraged to falsify their, their documents by ANZ staff. So um, my question is, well, one thing is, would you be prepared, Shane Elliott, Mr. Mr. Elliott, to speak with Elizabeth? And um, I've got some other questions as well. So well, today, can I, would, yeah. yeah, can I pick up on that? And this is yeah. very similar to Mr. Caulfield's question earlier on. Yeah. So just to reiterate, you won't be surprised by my saying that, you know, we don't agree with the characterization in that survey. Uh, and we certainly reject the notion that employees have been instructed to do anything untoward. I'm very sorry to hear about the experience that you've outlined. Clearly, you've had a very negative experience yourself and the people who you are here representing. And that's certainly not something that in any way uh, uh, I would ever want to see happen. But nonetheless, I want to be really clear at ANZ, you know, we scrutinize applications carefully. We have no incentive to make a bad loan. It creates the sort of disharmony and the unhappiness that we want to make sure we can avoid. And I can't comment on specific cases clearly, but uh, it's, I just want to be really clear, we are not about wanting to make loans to people who are not in a position to repay them. Yeah, look, um, you would have thought so, but uh, UBS keeps coming up with these surveys and keeps uh, finding the same information. So I'm just really concerned that 
the liar loans are escalating at ANZ Bank. And I'd like to ask, what steps have you taken to make sure that, what, well, to investigate, uh, you know, I guess the findings that UBS is finding, you know, how come they're making these findings? And I don't understand why, I mean, I brought this up in 2019, don't understand why it's still a, a big issue again in 2021, uh, five years after the Royal Commission. So as we mentioned earlier, um, if, these, if, the, if the allegations were correct, you would expect that would start to show up in our loss rates and in our 90 days past due rates. As both Shane and I have mentioned, they're actually at levels that are below the pre-COVID averages. So uh, we judge it on the results and on the outcomes. That, that may change this year. You know, um, if we have a recession, if we enter a recession, a lot of people are really doing it tough, and that's in the media yes, a lot yeah. now. So, you know, once they've used up their buffers, once they've used up their credit cards, people are going to get into trouble. And as Craig was saying, you know. Perhaps you know five percent people are, are going to be struggling. We've had uh, good economic times. We've had a very strong property market. So these, um, it, you know, may it may become more evident uh, if we enter a recession. And I, I guess uh, the other question I've got is uh, for, for John McFarlane is, uh, you know, what's happening here with risk assessment? Okay, and just just to well on, on that note, actually, it's very relevant. I would remind you, of course, that we're required to assess, when we're looking at lending uh, for home loans, people's ability to repay 3% uh, above the rate at which we're initially is on the market when they're coming in for the loan. So is that the reason that there's a motivation for liar loans? I mean, I... Well, I'm rejecting the assertion that there is uh, a practice of liar loans. And as I say, the fact that we've got uh, performance in our loan book which is better than our peers, the fact that we're at levels that are below pre-COVID in terms of delayed payments, all that indicates that clearly we've got some strong processes in place. And the numbers we've got don't match some of the items that are being alleged in the survey. I don't know if there's anything else to add to that. I think we've kind of been over this ground already, Mr. Ehrman. I'm not sure I'm adding a lot of value to you or to the meeting by continuing to prosecute it. 